Hello and welcome to Global Dialogue. I'm Shireen Bhan and we're in conversation with the head of global safety at Meta. India is of course uh, Meta's largest market uh, in terms of its user base and to talk about what the India roadmap looks like from a safety perspective and what the global trends are. Joining me is Antagni Davis. Antagni, thanks so much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Appreciate your time. Uh, yeah, let me start by talking to you about Digital Suraksha, which is the campaign that uh, Meta is working on with the Indian government. What are you hoping to achieve at the end of this? Well, I, one of the things that we are definitely hoping to achieve is to make people more aware of the tools that we have, particularly in context of youth safety. We have over 30 tools that we've launched. We want to make sure that people are aware of them and, and using them. And we actually heard from the minister today about a, a push for us to do this more in the states throughout India. And mm. we will take that feedback back and you know if you are going to be doing this in India and relevant to an Indian audience I would imagine that it will have to be in different languages because uh, that is how you will get the message across so what's the plan on that front yes yeah, so well, to give you an idea of our commitment to to ensuring that we're bringing our safety tools across the languages that are spoken in India we have um, over 20 la different languages that are covered by our content moderators these are the moderators that ensure that we're enforcing our policies properly. Our Family Center, which is launched here in India, has 10 different languages. So we're very committed to ensuring, Indian languages that is, to ensuring that we have um, provided the right safety languages, you know, languages across all the safety, mm -hmm. you know, safety across all the languages. Uh, in, in terms of making the tools and the solutions more contextual and relevant to the audiences uh, that you are catering to, from an India perspective, uh, given the demographic, given, uh, you know, what you are seeing in terms of trends of uh, online abuse, etc., is there anything specific that has been done to customize the tools for an Indian audience? Well, let me talk to you for one minute about the way in which we ensure that we're customized. We uh, have partners throughout India that we work with, NGOs, so the Rati Foundation, the Center for Social Research, Red Dot Foundation that are working with us to ensure that our whatever guides, whatever resources, whatever tools we're building, whatever policies we have are informed by the local context. There are also things that we launch India first. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to tell you one that's not safety specific and then one that is safety specific. Sure. Reels, which I'm sure everybody in India knows, was launched in India yeah. in India first. Um, safety wise, we have a big campaign called Report Don't Share. Mm. It's in relation to child ex sexual exploitation material. We launched that first in India. We worked with Indian uh, organizations to develop the context, the content to make sure that it had the right context mm. and brought it to India, India first. Mm. We have Was other, there a reason why you brought it to India first? I think we have a large number of, of, of users in India. We have a large number, there are a large number of young users in India and we wanted to be sure that we were meeting the needs, needs of the country. There are other things that we've done that have been India first on the safety front as well. For example, um, in terms of women's safety, we have something that's where you can lock your lock your profile because we heard that there were issues around photo safety for women in India and so we developed a specific tool and launched it here in India. You know speaking of how the experience and the learnings from India have helped you customize some of these solutions let's talk about WhatsApp because that's ubiquitous here in India and also has become a large part of the problem especially when we talk about the dissemination of fake news misinformation and so on and so forth and many measures or steps have been taken by Meta to try and curb that but you know do you believe that you need to do more and what is the learning now after what you've done well what I would say about safety generally is that we always feel like we want to do more in other words the way in which people are using technology is constantly evolving and the way in which we're deploying safety is constantly evolving and I don't think this is an area where you would ever see us sort of stop and say that's it we're done we've, mm -hmm. we're finished it's always changing it's an adversarial space and so we're committed to always always improving um, you talked about misinformation for example with whatsapp one of the things that we did was to set forwarding limits yeah. on content to yeah. ensure that we could slow down that that any kind of spread of mis misinformation that's the kind of learning and oftentimes tested here in india to to ensure that we're getting it correctly mm -hmm. uh, and, and I, I think that has made a difference in terms of just being able to slow down the virality mm -hmm. but uh, on the back of the feedback that you are getting and i know that you know regulators around the world are in dialogue and conversation with tech companies 
uh, like you, uh, where do you feel you need to prioritize action? Where is the immediacy, the urgency today uh, in being able to curb misinformation? Well, I would actually take one step back and say, if you ask me what's, what do I think the urgency is today, I think the urgency today is to try to develop a set of standards for industry broadly. Mm. So, you know, right now in India, people are having active conversations around regulation. I, we welcome that. Our, in, our interests are aligned with policymakers when it comes to safety. We are in need of a set of standards that are clear and concise for all of industry that ensure that we all are working in this, with the same um, understanding of what is expected, expected of us. And so you'll see that we already are collaborating deeply with policymakers and will continue to do so so that we can get to that place. Are you also collaborating with your peers? Because there are yes. reports suggesting that there is likely to be an alliance of sort of uh, Google, Meta and others coming together. And they have proposed, at least to the Indian government, for setting up a sort of self-regulatory body, a self-certification body, a network of fact-checkers, if you, uh, you know, uh, for the lack of a better word. Uh, what's the progress on that? And is there alignment between the tech world on what the standard should be or what the code should be? So I think you're speaking about the misinformation combat right. alliance. That's not an area of my, my expertise, but what I can speak to is broadly about industry coming together. So I do think that we're seeing more and more areas where industry is coming together. So I'm, I don't know how familiar you are with something called GIFCT. Mm -hmm. This is a, a global forum to counter terrorism. That was really generated with governments as well and industry coming together to come up with a way together to fight terrorism content on, on platforms. Another area is something called the Tech Coalition. So this is an industry alliance um, across, our, across Google, Microsoft, uh, Meta, and other, other uh, SNAP and other uh, companies to fight child, child exploitation, mm -hmm. to set up both a joint effort in terms of the technology that, that we're developing, in terms of the programming that we're developing, in terms of the resources that we're developing right. to ensure that we're doing this industry-wide because almost all of these problems are industry-wide mm -hmm. problems. They're never, it's not generally something you see on only, on only one, one platform. No, you're absolutely right. This, this is an industry-wide issue. Uh, but you also talked about the need for standards that, uh, that you know, the, the industry has clarity on. But, the need for harmonization uh, across the world and that I think is posing to be a challenge because India is looking at its own regulation, different jurisdictions are looking at their own regulations. How much of that is a challenge for a company like yours given the fact that you're operating across so many different jurisdictions today? Well, as someone who used to work for a regulator, I very much understand every regulator's desire to sort of set the rules and to know within the context of their country what they, what they think is needed. I also recognize the need for global standards and some uniformity because we are operating at a global, at a global scale. But interestingly, I think we're starting to see some of that harmonization mm -hmm. in the sense that we see many members of uh, many regulators around the world focusing on the same issues. Right. So I'll give an example. But their approach to that might be different. They, they might be different, yeah. but through conversation, you, we're, you know, you get some, some beginning of uniformity, and I would urge them to, to, to go in that, that direction. But I'll give one example. Mm -hmm. So let's take age verification. Right. This is something that's coming up quite a lot around the world. People are trying to figure out how do we ensure that uh, industry is providing age-appropriate experiences. Mm -hmm. And age verification or understanding the age of the user is important for providing age-appropriate experiences. Now, we generally hear oftentimes from regulators, it doesn't really matter where, a push for using ID verification right. until they under start to think about and hear the complications of that. It is complicated because not everybody has an ID. You're going to cut off access. Also, it means that you're going to be, we will, as an industry, will be collecting more information mm -hmm. than you might want to give to us. It's not just the age at that point. Generally, IDs c carry a lot more information. That said, that could be one potential solution. But what we're starting to see is industry that policymakers around the world are honing in on multiple options. So instead of saying you just have to verify by ID, maybe there are other ways in which you can identify somebody's age, maybe signals on the platform, mm. or maybe technology that uses f the face and to understand what somebody's age is. These are different solutions that are developing, 
And if we can work globally, we can actually open up the door for multiple solutions and then allow those, those solutions to be offered around, around the globe and satisfy the need of understandable need and concern policymakers have with that particular issue. You know, you, you talked about verification. Uh, so let me address the issue of, uh, of the rollout as far as uh, the, the verified plan is concerned. And we've seen this back and forth with Twitter, but that's a different story altogether. I want to understand what the rollout for you so far has, has been like, uh, and especially as you pilot this now in the U.S., and with what the plan is for India, and also the implications of that. Because if you were to be able to just pay for a blue tick or a blue badge or whatever the case may be, how do you then ensure that it's not just an identity issue, but you know, the verification process was not just about the blue tick. It was about people, uh, you assume that this was somebody in a position of authority, in a position of power, in a position of decision making, and so on and so forth. How do you ensure uh, that it is not up for misuse? Well, this, I think there's a reason that it uses the word pilot. I think that's important. I think there's a reason that it is a pilot. Almost everything that we do, we test first. We try to roll it out in a, in a controlled or smaller space to understand it so that we can answer those very questions that you, that you have. How are we going to ensure that it works as designed? How are we going to ensure that when, when you're talking about verification, we're, at, we're able to do that in, a, in an accurate way and then provide the services that, that come with, with that verification? And so this is why it is really at a pilot stage now. And it will be interesting to see what we learn and how we go from, go from there. And what's been the experience so far? Well, I think it's really too early for me to say what, what's been so far, but we'll, we'll see soon. It's very new. Okay. Uh, you know, since we are talking about some of the tools that you've brought in, especially to, uh, to curb misinformation, I want to talk about the AI model that you put in place with Spear uh, and what the learnings are from that and whether you believe that, you know, in, in this world of generative AI, et cetera, this is going to be the route forward in being able to address some of these issues. Well, we've long used AI. I mean, it's interesting to hear now the, the public conversation around AI, and I think it's particularly around because of the generative AI and, and particularly around chat. But we've long used AI in the context of, of safety. So, for example, we, we um, have tools in the background that enable us to keep unconnected adults from messaging, from messaging um, minors. We also use this AI to identify what we would think of as potentially suspicious accounts and prevent those suspicious accounts from connecting with minors. Those suspicious accounts, that's all AI and signals that are used to develop and identify what is a suspicious account. That account may not violate our policies. We may not have an indication they're violating our policies. But based on signals or behaviors of those accounts, we can identify them as suspicious. And we can prevent them from engaging with a minor or prevent us from sharing minors, uh, you know, offering up minor, minors and people you may know to those, kinds of, to those accounts. So this is a kind of AI that we've been using for a really long time in the context of safety. Mm -hmm. You know, it is election season, or it is we're heading into election season, and this has, of course, been a big challenge for platforms like Meta. Uh, in light of the learnings of the past, uh, is there anything that you know we will see you do different this time around? Well, we have a, a whole um, host of programming and work that we do around elections to ensure, in, you know, integrity and safety during those time periods. In particular, I don't work on this specifically, but in particular, my team does work on the safety of. Um, women public figures during during elections and we have special programming and training that we do to ensure that women uh, public figures are able and candidates are able to maintain their safety um, during the course course of an election you know you talked about uh, online safety for women and I know that as part of the digital Suraksha campaign you're also working with law enforcement uh, in India particularly uh, Again, is there, is there anything specific that you see here in India with respect to uh, the, the kind of reactions that we see specifically for women and how, uh, you know, Meta, for instance, has been able to deal with some of that? Well, I'm actually going to talk to you one of the things that I've seen in India, and both in my last visit and in, in this visit, that I think is extraordinarily um, exciting and promising, and that is the, the um, development of the creator community mm -hmm. 
And they're not only engaging in terms of creating great content for people to see and to be engaged with, but they're really involved in a lot of the safety work that we do, whether that's through promoting anti-bullying campaigns or we had a particular effort with, um, with, creator, uh, with a, uh, cre a Bollywood creator and star in relation to uh, child safety and child exploitation. And we see this opportunity and real creativity in India around these kinds of issues. Um, you know, as, as you look at the way that we're seeing these platforms grow and the kind of reach that you enjoy, um, what are the specific challenges that you, you, know, you believe that you need to deal with today in the context of uh, the, the kind of sort of messaging that you want to send out, but also the way that the platform is being used by different constituencies uh, in being able to, at this point in time, for instance, in India, you're not liable for the content that's posted by uh, people on the platform, but that could change if the new digital act comes into play. So how are you gearing yourself up from a regulatory perspective uh, in light of the, the proposed changes? Well, I think, you know, we have long... Um, felt that it was important for industry standards to be developed. We haven't waited for them. We've tried to develop tools and safety and policies to ensure that we are providing a safe experience, regardless of where uh, the legislation the legislation goes. We're also really trying to co-design those safety efforts with our users. So that's in the context of creators, it's in the context of the people who use our platform. And I feel confident that we share the same goals as, as policymakers. We want people to feel safe on our platform. People won't engage, people won't use, use our platform or use our apps if they don't feel safe. And so we really, it, this is really a matter of kind of coming together now to align on, on the approach and I think we'll get there. But there is also this sort of challenge between the anonymity that some people want to continue to enjoy on platforms and the need for verification and identification. Uh, so as a platform, uh, you know, how, how much of a burden is that at this point in time to, to walk that fine line and walk that balance? Well, I think we've, we've been able to do it, do it pretty well. I mean, I, on our platforms, we, we can, there's information that we can know in the background about a user that they, that they, share, that they share with us. And then there, there is, you know, we don't, I don't know that we, we really have the kind of anonymity that you would typically, that people typically associate with parts of the, parts of the internet. We try to encourage people to have an authentic experience and to behave authentically on our, on our platform. We do a lot in the background to identify people who are not engaging authentically, who are either impersonating or have fake accounts. And so that's how we try to control to control that area and, and try to ensure that we have the authentic experience where you know who it is that you're engaging with. Mm -hmm. You know, one of course is the issue of uh, regulators or governments uh, telling you to take something down. And there have been takedown requests that, and we've seen that number go up considerably. But preemptive action, you know, uh, give me an anecdote of how Meta is responding to this preemptively, responding to uh, what you may see as, as uh, misinformation, fake news, bullying, uh, you know, online harassment, for instance. Well, this goes back actually to when you were talking about talking about AI. So we have policies. You're not allowed to violate our policies. They're open and stated on, on our on our platform, and they cover exactly the content that you're talking about: bullying content, um, hate speech, misinformation, and and other uh, other types of content. And we then use AI that can identify that content before um, and, and move it before people report it to us. We have a transparency report because it's important for people to know that if we say that we're taking down this content, that they understand what we're taking down and how much of it we're taking down and how effective we are. And to give you an example, we have content, let's say, say um, uh, bullying and harassment content or hate speech content or child exploitation content for that matter. We have a transparency report that, that shows how much content we take down in that particular area as well as the percentage of it that we get before it's been reported to us. And across most of the areas that we report on, we're 90% of the time or, or more catching that content before it's reported to us. Uh, and are you seeing that in India it's different, where you are seeing a higher percentage of takedown requests coming in to you? 
I don't know the number of takedown requests in comparison in comparison to to other to other countries. I apologize for not knowing that. But we also, on, on the in the context of takedown requests, are slightly different than what I was talking about. We have transparency around that as well, so that people are made aware of the takedown requests that we're getting, so that they understand what is the government asking us to take down, and and what are we doing in response to that. You know. Uh, India is not just your largest user market, it's also an important strategic market for you from, as you pointed out, an incubation perspective where you're incubating ideas uh, and also testing uh, some of your new solutions. So, so what's, uh, what's on the anvil at this point in time? Uh, you talked about reels and you talked about some of the other solutions that you test, uh, tested here in the Indian market. What, what are you prioritizing at this point? Well, I think we're, we're quite focused on the creator community. Uh, India has an incredibly active creator community and we've seen them use reels to to great to great effect i you know i mentioned to you that i was here earlier in less well it's not earlier in this year it was last year but it was within the last 12 months I, i've been here um, earlier and when, when i was here i in, was sat down and had a conversation with creators and one of the things that came across to create it from creators was that they needed some additional tools. They focused a lot at the time on being able to balance their life as a creator with some of their life that was outside of their of the work that they were doing as a creator and finding a way to be able to have that time balance. And since that time from when I when I came into now, we have a new tool called the scheduling tool that was developed in response to that kind of feedback that we had gotten from creators. So we do look to India first in this area. And as you pointed out, this is not your first visit to India, it's your sixth visit. Yes. How have you say, seen this market change? You talked about the creator economy and it's, it's grown significantly, but what are some of the other insights uh, over the last uh, you know, six visits that you've done here in India that, that you know, that has, uh, to your mind, given you a sense of how much things have changed here? Well, one of the things that, that I've seen that's, that I'm really excited about on a, on a personal level is growth in the um, number of active women on our, on our platform and the activity there. I remember when I first came to India, there was a lot of conversation from the women that I was meeting with around safety. And not that women's safety isn't an issue, it's always an issue, it's still an issue now. But at the time, there was, that seemed to be impacting people's, women's interests in being on our platform. That seems to have really changed. And I, you know, I met with the minister earlier today, and I had heard her say last night on the news, 400 million women are active, uh, fiscally active contributing members of, of India's, uh, India's economy. And a lot of that is through small businesses, and our platform is playing a role in that, in, in women being able to develop their small businesses and bring them forward, and women being a part of the creator community. So that, to me, is one of the most exciting things that I've seen, mm -hmm. is the extraordinary activity of women on our platform here in India. Well, well, that, that's good to hear, and uh, it's good to know that more women are actively participating in the economy through using, using uh, digital technology as well. Uh, You've, you've had quite the India visit this time around, haven't you? I, I have. <laughs> Curtis, well, courtesy, I know, I, lost baggage. <laughs> courtesy lost baggage, but you know what? But you've experienced the Make in India story for yourself firsthand. <laughs> yes, it was, I mean, it was really quite incredible. I arrived at 10 o'clock, I found out I didn't have my luggage. By 10.30, they had me in a store that had opened up specifically because I, I, for me. They took all my measurements, and by 7 a.m. this morning, I had a suit. I mean, only in India, only in India. <laughs> it's a nation of problem solving. Well, uh, problem solving and making it India experience firsthand. And Tiffany, thanks so much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Uh, we wish you the very best for the rest of your trip and we hope you get your bags back as well. Me too, me too. But good to speak to you and thanks very much.